Hey everybody, this is Neil once again from the Overtracker magazine. I'm coming to you a day before 31st of December 2022, literally like 48 hours before the new year 2023. And with that, I have something that I was kind of looking forward to talking to you about. I'm sure you've seen all the hype and, and the announcements and the reviews and so forth for the Radeon RX 7000 series. And the two cards in question was uh, the 7900 XTX and the card that i have right here with me which is the radeon rx 7900 xt particularly from the asus tough gaming division so it's the tough gaming oc edition of the rx 7900 xt so as usual i come talk to you first as always about the price and so forth so with this one i actually don't have final pricing the price that you have for other 7900 XT cards, which are competing with this tough model, around 27 grand. In fact, Asus's direct competitor is charging 27 grand. So I would not be surprised if this GPU comes in at that kind of price. Now, the reason why this price is important is because 27 grand, as always, is a lot of money, but it is a high-end graphics card. However, what makes this price particularly important is that you can get an RTX 4080 for 25 grand make of that what you will but anyway first thing you want to know about this card is that it's massive it's huge when i say huge it's exactly the same size as the aruchi strix rtx 4080 which is a massive card okay so asus tells you that the tough gaming card is a 3.63 slot design the cooler at least is 3.63 slots come on man that's that's just four slots nothing else is just four slots in fact i'll show it to you look at this I don't know if you can see it proper, but look at the size of this thing. This is huge. Okay, this is huge. In fact, do you realize that in a Crystal Series, uh, the Corsair case, the Crystal Series uh, 680X, which is my personal case, I can't fit this graphics card in there. It's just too big. But with that, you get some super, super cooling. In fact, compared to the Tough Gaming 6900 XT, this has a few advantages, one of which is not only is the cooler beefier, but it has actually bigger fans. So these XL fans that you see over here, so these are a little bit bigger than the ones you got in the 6900 XT. So obviously they're moving more air as well. And according to Asus themselves, the performance of this cooler is sizably better or rather measurably better than the performance that you got from the 6900 XT, the equivalent of the tough gaming one. So with that said, you're also going to notice that there are actually three 8 pin power connectors here i don't know if you can see them on camera right now you should be able to just hope the light isn't in your way but you should be able to see them right here so these three power connectors you're going to uh, plug in eight eight pin pcie connectors right and i must say i actually prefer this over what nvidia has implemented on the rtx 4000 series if there's any reason why you would even want to consider amd this is one of the advantages particularly if you have an older psu that doesn't have any of these new connectors but anyway, with that said, so I've spoken to you about pricing and I've just shown you the card and just how behemoth it is. But again, with that, you are getting superior cooling. In fact, the cooling is so good here that under load, I never recorded anything above 65 degrees. In fact, most of the time it was 61 degrees centigrade. That is phenomenal. This is under Fermark. Yes, Fermark, the GPU will not clock to what it regularly clocks to. But that's besides the point, even in gaming the gpu stayed under 65 degrees and even my hotspot temperature never went above 65 degrees as well so another thing about this tough gaming rx 7900 xt is that it actually has some rgb lighting on it it's very minimal but it is tasteful and it's right at the edge of the graphics card and i kind of like that design you know uh, some people are not partial to rgb but you just want a little bit and i think this gives you that obviously you'll control this using the software that asus has and in fact talking about software i recently started using gpu gpu tweak version 3 and i must say it is significantly better than what we used to have before the things i used to complain about the fact that the windows are not resizable and so forth they fixed all of that the osd makes sense you can customize it and this actually goes a long way into perhaps making sure that you don't necessarily need to have the know-how to set up uh, rtss and maybe any other third-party program if you want an overlay this literally just allows you to do that with gpu tweak so it really is a great program and for the first time i would actually recommend that you actually do use it 
and even in overclocking and setting the modes and so forth i just used exclusively that software so i must say good going for asus on making the gpu tweak 3 uh software it's not perfect but it's a long 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 way removed from what we used to have before and i must say i actually do like it but either way let's talk about what actually matters here and which is what actually excites me and that's the performance of this graphics card so you've seen the reviews right now let me not beat about the bush you know what it is right as it stands right now the xtx the 7900 xtx offers better value than the 7900 xt which is one i have here but that doesn't mean you shouldn't buy the 7900 xt and for that you're going to pay a premium price right and that premium price in us dollars i think is 899 and given the asus tax and all of that that translates into roughly 27 grand here i think it will be a little bit more than that but that's how much you're going to pay so with that are you getting performance that is worthwhile come on let's face it if you are going to pay 900 dollars or whatever or 27,000 rand you are going to want to know that you can game at 4k because what are the odds chances are you have a 4k screen and in traditional rasterized rendering for the games that don't necessarily support or rather don't make extensive use of ray tracing this card is probably going to get you there i'm not saying you want to max out everything and use 4x uh, msaa and whatnot but it will get you close enough to 60 fps that is going to be a great experience for you however in my testing i only tested games that supported ray tracing barring red dead redemption 2 and the reason i speak of red dead redemption 2 even though it does not use ray tracing is because if you look at the performance that you were getting and you will see it now in the benchmarks notice where the performance is versus the rtx 4080 and again i use the rtx 4080 an rog model by the way and the performance that it gives compared to the 7900 xt the 7900 xt despite costing roughly the same amount of money is not close i just have to be honest with you i can't lie to you it's not it's it's just inferior and i would expect it to be because the direct competitor to the rtx 4080 is the 7900 xtx however something very interesting happens if you enable fsr in red dead redemption for instance the frame rates literally double in fact in some cases in the case of 4k it more than doubles i think i went from the mid 30s in fps to above 80 frames per second that is impressive so what does that tell you that there is actually some value to be had in this graphics card yes if you do not use fsr it's not going to be competitive to an rtx 4080 not in the least however we do know that FSR is being introduced in a lot more games. In fact, all the games that I tested, all of them supported FSR barring Metro Exodus, the enhanced edition. And even then, you will see the performance that it's actually not bad. It's gameable or playable up until uh, uh, 4K resolutions. Games coming out today actually have FSR 2.0, 2.1. And in fact, uh, Cyberpunk, which is a game that supports FSR 2.1, the performance gains were dramatic there as well and the image quality losses they were not perceivable to me as far as i'm concerned it was butter smooth and the image quality was fantastic but with that i got full ray tracing because i ran ray tracing ultra and i got supreme supreme frame rate so i'm super super happy about fsr in fact i would even say fsr for me is what saves this graphics card and makes it relevant today and even for future gaming purposes because fsr is only going to get better in fact we even know that amd is going to introduce their version of frame generation right that uh we get dlss3 has that for nvidia so amd next year come 2023 is going to introduce something similar to that so what would make this graphics card the ultimate graphics card for me a cheaper price and in lieu of that i do feel that amd shot itself in the foot here Again, this is not something that Asus could have done anything about or any other vendor, for instance. All they can do is just make sure that within this expression of the 7900 XT, you get the best version of that. And I'm sure that this is probably it right here because, I mean, think about it. If you are going to improve this graphics card, how much bigger are you going to make this cooler? No, honestly, how much bigger are you going to make this cooler? The only thing that you can do is move to like a water cooled one and when we do that we're talking something else and even a higher price than that but in terms of the air cooled models i don't think you're going to get much better than this in fact i will probably put money on it that you are not going to get better than this 
right? And I'm not talking overclocking and things like that because it just depends on the sample that you have. Anyway, with that said, I want you to take a look at the benchmarks. Just note for yourself just how much difference FSR in quality mode, by the way, I only used it in quality mode. How much difference it actually makes to the performance here i am more than anything else i'm actually impressed by how well this graphics card does with fsr it's almost like it breathes life into the gpu that otherwise it didn't have and when you are using fsr and compare it with what you're getting with the rtx 4080 i think you know what it makes a great showing for itself yes the xtx is still a better card and yes you can use dlss for nvidia and whatnot but i'm telling you when you are playing the games and you are noticing that your gpu temperatures are like under 65 degrees it's running so so quiet what more are you going to ask for so look at the performance in light of that and look at it with fsr and then decide for yourself is 27 grand worth it which is the price i think this is going to be is 27 grand worth it and do i have the money for that and if you are an amd fan and you just want to stick with amd then this is a solid option for you. Again, if your money allows you to, I would just say go straight for the 7900 XTX because everything I've said about this applies to the graphics card as well. But if you're not able to do that and you still want to go AMD, then definitely check out this graphics card. I'm not here to tell you if you should buy it or not. Just look at the numbers, look at the price and decide for yourself. But either way, with that said, let me know what you guys think below. And until next time, have a... Happy New Year. Take care and peace.